Morning, welcome back to Garage Cricket. Hopefully you had a really nice Easter. Today we've got a bit of a change up and we're going to be looking at making or creating our own seam balls. So something uh, a little bit like these, uh, these two here to make life a little bit more difficult for batters at home, improve your bowling skills. Um, and you know maybe there's someone in your family who's been churning up the runs in the back garden during this period. This hopefully is a nice way to make it harder and get them out a little bit earlier. So it's time to make our seam ball that's going to go and do all sorts. So for this, uh, I'm going to be using some string. I've obviously got myself a tennis ball, got some sellotape, like whatever things you've got at home in your garden shed, um, elastic bands, gaffer tape, electrical tape, whatever you need to do to, uh, to obviously make it work. So getting the seam onto the ball, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut myself uh, a piece of string, which I've uh, done so here. Uh, then I've got myself some sellotape already cut. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach a piece of string and stick it to the middle of a ball, uh, similar to where the seam would be. And then I'm going to wrap around uh, nice and tight so that the seams come pretty close uh, together down the middle of a ball. It doesn't matter too much if things um, overlap or not. Uh, because obviously different uh, heights or of the seam will mean that the ball is going to misbehave in uh, stranger ways and make things uh, even more uh, difficult for you. So you can go around uh, a couple of times until you get to the point where all your string uh, is ready uh, like that. Then get yourself uh, another little piece of uh, sellotape or whatever tape you're using uh, and wrap that there. Oh, that one's no good to us. and just wrap that uh, around the ball to keep that in place. Then I get my roll of sellotape or gaffer tape or whatever I'm using. Uh, where's the end? There it is that. And now the next stage I would, what I recommend is you want to seal that seam together. So I'm going to use the sellotape to wrap right round uh, the seam of the ball that I've made quite nice and tightly. I'm going to go around uh, a couple of times and that just kind of like seals uh, the seam in. Uh, like so. Then you might want to just kind of check your ball and pat down the edges, make sure that you seal that string in uh, nice and tight uh, to ensure that you've got uh, a nice seam on your ball and as you can see that is going to act as like a kind of ridge and means that if the ball hits that it's going to deviate off in different ways you can make it uh, even more difficult if you want by potentially taping up one side of a ball and leaving the other side of a ball unblemished that will in uh, introduce swing uh, onto the ball and it's a really simple way of increasing the challenge. Maybe great, as I say, uh, if uh, your older brother or sister uh, is in the whole time at the moment. Get one of these that make life a bit harder. Nick him off early doors uh, in the garden this afternoon. So you've now created your seam ball, so it replicates our cricket ball here. Now, seam bowling is extremely important, particularly on pitches that don't do a lot, uh, because it allows the ball to deviate if it bounces and hits the seam off in different directions. Sometimes you might get a little bit more bounce uh, as well, which is gonna make it much harder for the batsman to be able to play attacking shots and increases your chance of getting them out. For me as a bowler, I'd say presenting the seam is my greatest strength. I don't swing the ball particularly much and therefore if I want to create movement I need to be able to hit this seam. So we're just going to talk a little bit quickly about how can we get it so that this seam goes down towards the batsman uh, like that. Hopefully you're familiar with our regular seamers grip, something along the lines of this with these two fingers uh, comfortably uh, either side of the seam, whatever position you want, your thumb just resting on its side underneath and the fourth and fifth fingers tucked off to the side. This will allow us to present that seam like that and you can see how that seam goes uh, up and down towards the batsman here, increasing the chance of that being here. It's great to be able to do it with both hands because it means that you have to think about it to transfer it to your weaker hand which strengthens that motor program and means you're more likely uh, to be successful and this is going to take hold a little bit better. Now I realised by doing this here I'm putting backspin on the ball which isn't how a seamer releases the ball most of the time so make sure obviously you can push it out as well and I know I've got my bent elbow here but we're looking at just pushing that ball out, that wasn't a very good one there and getting this idea that it's going to roll off my second and third fingers, those two fingers and go towards 
the batsman like that. So that's something you can practice here. Now, obviously, if you've got more space than myself, really actually, you know, up against the wall, if you've got it, go through your bowling action and really see, can you get it as you bowl, but it's being pushed off those two fingers. And if you get a snap of a wrist as well, you're gonna suddenly be able to get some really nice bounce there, like some of the best bowlers in the world. Now, so we've built our seam ball. We've had a look at how we can release that seam ball. Now, can we build that into our batting? Because as I said, all of these days, we're gonna be looking predominantly uh, at batting. And how can we face seam bowling. So that's the step we're going to go to now. So I've got a variety of uh, seam balls uh, and seam slash swing balls uh, that I've produced here which I'm going to be using uh, to bat against today. Now obviously I'm here on my own so I've got to throw against the wall and come back. doesn't matter. I can still replicate facing seam using these balls. Obviously if you've got someone to bowl to you, even better. Uh, so for me here I'm going to be, as we've seen in previous weeks uh, and previous episodes, I will be underarming that ball or overarming that ball towards the wall. Now, as I do this, I want to focus on obviously having that correct grip we spoke about and releasing it so it comes off those two fingers so I can do this and train it with both hands, which is great because it trains a good seam position. So not only are we looking at batting, this kind of becomes uh, subconscious, which means we're gonna do it naturally in the game. So you're also improving your bowling. So if you're feeding overarm, for instance, get used to pushing it off and getting that wrist snap that we spoke about and pushing that seam so that it goes down towards uh, the batsman like that. So, here we go. First ball with my seam ball. We're looking to see, is it going to deviate a little bit more? That one there has indeed, and I've just knocked the phone. There we are, we're back up. So we're just trying to focus on that release here, presenting the seam. That one there's just straightened off the seam slightly. Okay, so I'm there watching that ball very closely. Now things we need to think about when we're playing a ball that's seaming around. Uh, one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to play the ball too early or get planted too early. By that I mean, if I think, uh, so if I get into a position with my feet that I'm going to play the ball from too soon, and then the ball moves at the last minute. So for instance here, I'm feeding it and it's coming across me like this. If that ball bounces, then jags back, my pad's now already in the way and I can't access that ball. Similarly, if I go hard the ball out in front of me, I'm much more likely to edge it or miss it. So we want to try here, as this ball seems, to wait and play it as late as we can, so make sure we've the footwork acts kind of like at the last minute if I'm going forward or backwards. And the key thing with the footwork is can you try to get your eyes over the top of the ball or as close to the ball as possible. We would all back ourselves to take a catch here underneath the eyes, but would we back ourselves to take one fully extended away from the eyes? It's much harder. So we want to try similarly when we're batting to try and get the eyes, whether it is on the front foot or the back foot, over the top of the ball as best as we can, and that'll increase our chance of good contact. So the whole purpose of using this ball today is to increase the challenge that we're facing as a batsman. We've got to get used to a moving ball, and for some of you, you will need to be at the point where you are hurling this ball over arm to increase the pace of it. Uh, you may also want to make bigger seams, deeper seams, so that the movement becomes uh, more pronounced by putting more string um, around the ball. So let's see this in action here. So I've got my bottom hand off the bat here. I'm gonna throw and I'm gonna still focus on snapping those wrists and pushing those two fingers uh, through the ball. Let's go. Ooh. So that ball just moving away from me ever slightly. Ooh. That seam. The bounce is a little bit more variable. It helps also I've got a brick wall at the back, so naturally there's a bit more variation on it. So here, this has become quite difficult. I'm having to watch that ball a lot. I don't know if there's a, it's going to drag back and hit my stump, so I've got to cover it. One's just come back, one's gone away. So you can see it in action. I'm going to now play around with these seam balls, 
see if I can produce some absolute gems which are unplayable. Um, but hopefully you guys are going to go create your ball and then just enjoy playing. Off you go. See ya. So if you've made your ball correctly, it shouldn't be easy. You should be challenging yourself. It should be hard. There will be times uh, where unfortunately you do get out. So to encourage you, here's some uh, instances of me getting uh, cleaned up in my garage. Oh yeah, well done. Ooh. 